going to show you now how to find the total mechanical energy of the moon as it orbits the earth. So the total amount of energy is going to be equal to the gravitational potential energy plus the kinetic energy. Now, I'm assuming you've already seen the video on where the gravitational potential energy comes from. So the gravitational potential energy is negative G, mass of the Earth, mass of the Moon, over R, where G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, that's Newton's universal gravitational constant. And R is the distance between the moon and the earth. So we now have to find the kinetic energy of the moon. So as the moon orbits around the earth, how much kinetic energy is there? So we know that kinetic energy is half mv squared. Now, we're going to ignore the rotation of the moon. We're looking purely at translational kinetic energy here. So we're looking as it moves through space, not as it spins. And in order to do this, we need its mass and we need its velocity. Now, how fast is the moon going? We can do a little bit of geometry here and determine how far it travels as it makes its way around the Earth and divide that by the amount of time that it takes. But we're going to take our knowledge of circular motion as a bit of a shortcut here. So in order to determine the speed of the moon, consider this. For the moon to travel in a circle, the gravitational force that the Earth exerts on the moon is its net force, and that's equal to mass times its acceleration. I put AC because that is centripetal acceleration. It's accelerating towards the center. The force that the Earth exerts on the moon is G, mass of the Earth, mass of the moon, over R squared, the distance between them. So I'm using the big M, the uppercase M, as the mass of the Earth, and the lowercase M as the mass of the moon. And that's equal to the mass of the moon times its acceleration. This is really just Newton's second law. Net force equals mass times acceleration. The acceleration towards the center of an object moving in a circle is V squared over R. And the reason why this is a shortcut is notice we're looking for V squared. And expressed in here, we have v squared. So we're just going to do a little bit of rearranging. First off, we can cancel that r with one of those r's. We can cancel the m's. So we're left with v squared is equal to gm over r. So I have this from taking into consideration that the force the Earth exerts on the Moon is causing the circular motion, so it's equal to its mass times the centripetal acceleration of the Moon as it goes around the Earth. So that means the kinetic energy that the Moon has is half its mass times the square of its speed, so that is half of its mass times the square of its speed is g capital M over R. So the kinetic energy that the moon has as it goes around the Earth, if you just put all of this together, is G M M over 2R. Now that's interestingly familiar since the gravitational potential energy is negative GMM over R. That makes the total mechanical energy, which is the gravitational potential energy plus the kinetic energy, negative GMM 
over R plus G M M over two R. Now we're essentially just adding fractions here and we can do so by multiplying this top and bottom by two. If I multiply that top and bottom by two, I've got a common denominator. And that's to make it clear to you why that comes out to negative G M M over two R. That's the total amount of mechanical energy, the sum total of the gravitational potential plus the kinetic energy that it has. Why is that a negative? Because the maximum amount of gravitational potential energy it could have is zero. Remember, we're defining zero gravitational potential energy as being infinitely far away. So if the moon could fall an infinite distance to the Earth, it would have zero joules of potential energy. The fact that the moon is closer means it has less than zero, which is why it's negative. However, we're going to add to that the motion that's in there. If the kinetic energy was, so this value here, if the kinetic energy was actually twice as much as it is, if the kinetic energy was high enough that the total energy was zero, that would mean that the moon is not in orbit, but it's moving fast enough to escape the Earth's orbit, and we're up to escape velocity. So let me just put some numbers in here for you. So remember, G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. So this is negative 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. The mass of the Earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24. And the mass of the moon is 7.35. times 10 to the 22. And then we've got to divide all of this by two and also divide it by the distance between the center of the earth and the center of the moon. And that is 385,000 kilometers. Just stop and think about that for a second. It's incredible human beings have been there. So that is 385,000 thousand kilometers so i'm going to go times 10 to the 6 that'll put this in our si units in meters and then run all of that through your calculator and you should get negative 3.8 times 10 to the 28 joules that's the total mechanical energy of the moon in orbit now Remember, if that was as high as zero, that would mean the moon is moving fast enough to escape gravity and get infinitely far away.